like he's, he's still got 137 kills though for 735 rearms. Like if that's the case, his efficiency levels to the roof. Honey's in trouble. Good. Resolution was waiting for him. He doesn't have enough mana though to really finish the job here. But he's making sure Harney's going to walk all the way back to base straight away. At the same time, Lich, surprisingly, is able to get himself a kill. Didn't use his ultimate for this one either. And there was no ultimate from, uh, from Big Daddy either. It's just Clink's dead in the bottom lane, so I assume he just got himself caught out. Yeah, might have gone a little bit over overconfident on, on Fly there. And as a result of that, Fly's actually going to be level 7 now. It's 6 minutes in, which is... Absolutely amazing. Lich with high levels early on should not be underestimated. These two nukes combined that he has at this point can take three quarters of Silent's life. Yeah, at the same time though, you can see right how now. much of life points of fly can be removed from him. One more searing arrow. And all seven seven levels that experience just gets shared between Silence as well as Vanskor. Oh, was there a thing? I actually don't remember. Is, was there a patch at some point that changed it so Ancient Seal gives flying vision on the target? Or am I imagining things right now? I could be imagining things. You know more than I do about this right now, because I, I know nothing about it. I am this. not sure. It just felt like the attack that Silent got off. Why was actually trying to block him? Pick up, drag back, time to climb so high level, but his jump away. That last attack with the buff up as well, with the overcharge from Resolution, was able to fly and catch him. And three to one. This, this is the reason why like, I was betting so low on the Tinker. It's because you, you just look at the Team Empire lineup. You got Mag on this offlane. It's a Brewmaster who's only got 4 CS, but he's got 1,000 gold already. 1,100, in fact. So if he wants to rush a Blink Dagger, it's still going to come there in some reasonable amount of time. You can always want to fly who's almost got enough money to finish up his Buckler, at which point you'd be looking at most of the mech being completed. And you got Resolution. Okay, I know it's just Treads, but they're, they're coming in here, and now they're scouting out the fact the camps are here. With Midnight Pulse, as well as Static Remnant, they probably could clear through a lot of this. And this is yeah, where I'm not quite it. sure Fnatic can really get ahead. Like, Excalibur, he's doing the first stack farm now. Uh-oh, Hani. Where's yeah. Hani caught out? That's uh, the middle lane. Dyer's Man, middle they've got to get down to this ancient area right now and leech some of this experience. You can't leech it on Ancients. Oh, that's true, you can't. you got to be yeah, in there. Yeah, they have to farm it. To get the last hits. Those are the only camps. Those and Roshan are the only neutrals in the game that only the the last hitting team gets experience for. So yeah, Excalibur gets a lot out of this, but fly. still fly, uh -oh. fly. <laughs> Venskull waited perfectly in the tree line, just for him to come just a little bit too far out. And then Silent just turns a level 4 Searing Arrows. And they're going to T1 Town the bottom lane to, to boot for this one too. And Harney is considering a denial. Excalibur, Mr. Soul Ring, and uh, March from the Sheen trying to keep a distance here. They won't get the denial here. In fact, Harney, he's just so low fan score. No mana for another orb, however. We can't finish the job, and Silent is a little bit too far back. I think Silent might have actually been able to try to go for that kill. They should know that Tinker has marked, uh, maxed March of the Machines, so I don't think Silent was at risk there with the Ancient Seal at Life to Lion, but they got what they came for. They got the tower. And they're getting stuff everywhere, it seems, right now, Empire. Now Mag, actually Mag is... He is... Okay, he's still... He can, get, he can just rush to a, to a Blink Dagger. He's he has it in a moment. Yeah. Because with the tower going down, if, if Always on a Fly was able to finish what he started here in the middle lane, he'd be having the money right now. And Always on a Fly has already got the mech. We're 9 minutes 30 in. Obviously, Enigma is always going to farm fast. But he has a mech up and running, and he's pushing uh, He's pushing the mid-tower, which is already at half-life. Uh, again? What? Okay, please, please. Now, like, I was not looking there either. That's, that's, that's not where I was expecting a kill to this happen. This time, right though, now. the Lich ulti was used, and Hana used both Hex as well as Stun. So they caught Silent out legitimately this time. Yeah. Excalibur. As to just Excalibur is going to get his boots of travel now. We're 10 minutes in, so that's pretty good considering that he died once in the mid lane. This is generally about the, the timing that you want to have it on a mid lane tinker, so looking good for him. And this is going to be the last time I bring that thing up, by the way, with the, the boots of travel counter thing. It doesn't show. He's used rearm a couple of times in this yeah. game and it hasn't we, updated, we so have, we won't we have, have our wait answer. until he plays tinker the next game. Yeah. Before we can work out <laughs> if we're right or happen. not. <laughs> Mag's here in middle lane with Blink Dagger as well as Split level 7. Can throw that one out there. The Fnatic do not want to be anywhere near this lineup of Team Empire. Up against Mech, Black Hole, a resolution jump in. They're going double Orchids as well over here on Team Empire. So it's a high level of disable once it's up and running. Yeah, they're looking really good. I think for, uh, for Fnatic, it's, it's going to come down a lot to Hani's reaction time. He needs to land the Hex really quickly when Brew blinks in. Because if he gets Insta-Hexed, they have enough control to bring him down. They have the Hex, they have the Impale, and 
lots of damage from Lich. Arrow, uh, Big Daddy is going to reach level Spence 6 in a while here. as well. Hey, he's, oh, do yeah. he's doing a D ward of their D ward, turns it around, throws the ulti out, solos Arnie with one more attack. But now Escalibur will come in and finish him off. At the same time, though, Silent has the high ground, Escalibur's getting nowhere. He goes down, and now they've actually trapped in fly. They need some reveal, however, Moonlight Shadow's protecting him. Resolution with the first jump. He can stick with this one, Moonlight Shadow wears off in just a couple of seconds, but the arrow comes in from Trixie with the Starfall, and the Beastmaster Axis with the arrow set up, they're able to hold him land long enough, but now also no tail gives away his own life points. Yeah, Empire, Empire are so good at playing from this position. They're one of the best teams, in my opinion, at, at playing with an early advantage, so this has to be scary for Fnatic, and you just see they go for... Maybe not the most Radiant's aggressive items, but it's pretty damn close. Attack. Like you say, double Orchid, uh, Brewmaster Blink first with regular boots. Enigma Mech, I'm assuming maybe always want to fly, will go straight into Blink as well instead of BKB. Because there is Primal Roar, uh, but I still think BKB might be the better choice. But overall, they're just playing so aggressively. Van score, beautiful play by him there to realize he could take the solo kill on Hani as well. So, they're making the most out of the situation. With a DD rune, silent. Whoa, 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 man. He's... He had a lot of the March machine damage, and now he walks into Sentry Ward range. He couldn't have known. He really could. Actually, could he have known? No. The Sentry Ward's only brand spanking new. Like he had to get scouted out somewhere. I didn't see any Dyer's Overwards or Sentry Wards on the map apart from that one. But it was it was planted after he walked past it. Now Van score. Well, he throws the concussion shot out. Raw be used by Brewmaster. Jumps in for the clamp. The Lich on is going to go. It doesn't bounce up, however. And Magus wants to walk away because he doesn't have mana for his ultimate. The downside about going Blink Dagger first, Brewmaster with no Arcanes. Yeah, he's he's either going to have to go for Arcane Boots or for some other solution. He can go Treads, he can maybe work on a drum just to get some all stats, etc. But um, right now, he definitely does not have the, the mana pool to do it, unless if he has full mana. When he's clapped once, he can't clap split again. So that's what he paid for right there. Maybe he could have got a kill. Top lane though, Empire is just really aggressive here. They, I think they know Lion is there, but it looks like Always Wanna Fly just doesn't care about it. Dyer's top tower is under attack. I, I don't know if you, if you were saying this one before and I just missed the point of it, but uh, yeah, we'll never actually know how many Tinker re is used, because it doesn't count in private lobbies. Oh, okay. All right, top lane, through my split scum, they're going for Hani. They want his finger of death off this field of play, and they're going to get it too. He's already down, always want to fly, can't decide really what to attack, from being hit by the tower as well as the block, cross blast, takes away his life points, and they try and use Moonlight Shadow just to give a little bit more cover fire here. No tail, no roar, 13 seconds still on cooldown, silent. He's looking for a dark back unit, but he's going to be right behind Trixie. Resolution as well, Trixie sealed up and brought down, even though he does pick up a double kill, they'll move over towards Fly, so he's on the sidelines too, after one attack from Resolution, has to ultimately get himself in range, finally gets stopped with Mag blinking up to bring down Big Daddy and Harney, returns to the engagement, just a finger, the Storm Spirit down. And the, the push can continue to come on the top lane, it's a 192 light point tower, it shouldn't survive this anyway. That was actually pretty funny to see from uh, from Resolution. I think he cancelled this attack animation like three or four times on the last hit on Fly, and it's because he was slowed by Frost Armor, and he's just so comfortable with his hero's attack Funny. speed. He was expecting to be able to. Tinker's coming one in mana. right now, but Mag doesn't really have a lot of mana to play around with this one. He's getting, well, rocketed as well as lasered, but he's very, very tanky. If you could clamp straight away, they could have killed off Harney, but he didn't have the mana again to do so. Please get this Brewmaster some Arcane Boots. He just got 2,000 gold off of this, so I think he's, well, he's cruising. Rushing. Yeah, maybe he just rushes the Ags. Maybe he doesn't even get uh, an early mid-game item. Wait, I think point, he will. Point booster? There's the point yep. booster. There we go. And this is something that I have a feeling we're going to be seeing a lot this game. Solution solos off Excalibur, and it's incredibly easy. He doesn't even have the Orchid yet, and he was still able to do it. If there's no backup available for the Tinker, he will die if he gets caught. He cannot do anything with his own hero until he has some much bigger items. And Storm is going to snowball harder than him, so I think he's going to pretty much be able to solo him oh, the entire no game. Tell. You're not going to win this fight, man. Even with Boar, you're not going to win the ward battle. Yep. And now he's even going to get orbed up for his troubles and attack by Ancients. It's gotta suck. The amount of sentry wars being being thrown into this bottom lane is ridiculous. Like just to stop the ancient stack, and it's it's a hundred percent legit. Cause you, you've seen it from Fnatic. This is one of these things where Fnatic 
Like, they do get themselves stuck in their ways a little bit. I remember um, almost like nine months ago, I had like a long chat with Harney about things and uh, talked about like just strats and the ability just to rotate them around. And like, what oh, top lane. Are they jumping? It's it's silent solo killing Excalibur. <laughs> You'll pop from walking. <laughs> yeah. yeah but, but one thing that Harney said was, like, they just make up a strat and they'll keep using the strat until someone tries to counter it and then they'll just switch to another strat they were working on. And yeah. they just build up a repertoire the entire time. The problem is, though, in games like this, when you run the same strat you've been running for the past two, three weeks, the enemy knows exactly how to deal Dyer's with it. It's the Beastmaster stacking, pulling, and, and just flash farming a Tinker. Like, he knew it was going to come. So they just warded him and were prepared for it. Yeah, this, this is a hard Tinker game, like we said, when the draft was going on, and he's died five times already. I don't think it's because Excalibur is playing this poorly. It's just a really, really difficult game, which is why I was I was a little bit skeptical with how he was going to perform in this because he's playing under so much pressure. He has to be the one position to, uh, for his... Or, well, he was playing mid, but he has to be the most farmed hero on the team for this to really work out, I think. And at the same time, he's playing against three heroes that just want him dead, so... It is difficult. Maybe Trixie's doing a good bait here up top. Yes, he is. Yeah. Sun gets the hex. Sun's still got a lot of life points to play with, and Tinker still just dies at the same time. Now, obviously... Well, hang on. That went, that went two different ways right now. Marana sent up and towards the air as the Brewmaster ulti comes through, so it's a two for two trade off. They're looking for the kill on Trixie. Able to get that Earth Brew Link Sun after he's already done the leap, sending that Lich back up into the air, and now in comes Nurtel. He's got Raw Revival, but Magmac, the full life, and is able to blink away right in front of the Beastmaster. The arrow is coming out again, but in six seconds' time, if Mag wants to, he can technically turn into some damage here. Decides not to. I don't think he wants to. <laughs> he doesn't have enough right now with uh, no tail. Yeah, was it? Yeah, no tail sitting on about 450 health. He cannot do that. So it is. Um, it's looking good for Empire. While we were looking at top, or at least I was looking at top, we had Tinker die again. Uh, just this time, got killed by the Storm Spirit. And the problem is. See, this is where the predictability of his movement comes into play. They don't even necessarily need to predict it with their lineup. They have two heroes that can solo him. It's not just one. Mm -hmm. Either Storm or Clinks in the right place, the right time, will kill Excalibur. With the Ghost Scepter now, he can survive the Clinks. But if Mag chooses to go, or sorry, if Silent chooses to go for a, a little bit of an unorthodox build and gets a Diffusal Blade, he will still be able to solo him. This, this is just a, a really tough position for a tanker. I think we've gone past my 25, by the way. <laughs> even even in, a, in a game where he's been slightly crippled and pushed into a corner, he's still getting a lot more off. Uh, now, Mag on the top lane, Escalibur's coming up here to try and stop him. There's already pings coming out. The second they see Escalibur, it's like Empire just flag a big warning bell and say, guys, guys let's just go top. Oh, mid lane. Uh, there seems to be a long jump by Storm and they got it. Even before the ult's able to fly, he pulls him away from the Skyrath ulti. It still gets the kill nonetheless. If you walk through the Skyrath rage element, he'll be dead anyway. So that was just Lich's slaughter. And this, this tier 2 tower mid is going to take some pressure. Honey, wow, that's a bold play. Yeah, he comes out for the Hex. The Rawkos doesn't always want to fly. The Black Hole is still available. We still haven't even seen one of these coming out. Always want to fly. Storm Spirit jumps up. We've got Alistair split. Excalibur split on one side. Lion's already gone down. Trixie lipped, him, lipped himself up, but got himself caught inside the tree line. And now Beastmaster just focused down. With four heroes on the sidelines, a huge amount of damage still coming out of here of Team Empire. And inside the base, they're sending Excalibur up. They're going to dive in here. Mag, blink, clap. He he needs more help here. He's underneath the margin of the machines and just has to TP out. And he knows it too. There's no Hex, there's no stun. He's away to safety. But the tier 2 tower, dead in the middle lane, and Brewmaster is a full Ags 19, 20 minutes into this game. Yeah, and I, I know you're not a big fan of looking at golden experience graphs when one team is clearly ahead, but I really want to point out how far ahead they actually are. We know Empire is leading this game. But they're almost reaching what I like to call the... I don't want to call it the magical... Do I call it the magical mark? I don't know. When you have 1,000 gold per minute gained over the enemy team, the game is just almost going to be over when you're like 20 minutes in. They have 15,000 gold lead in a 20 minute game, and this experience is about 12. Coming back from this from Fnatic would be absolutely amazing, but it's going to be very difficult. There are five towers down, the map control is falling apart, and if there's one thing Tinker needs, it's map control. Yeah. This hero is very hard to play when you're cornered because you can't go anywhere, and that is really the case in this game. Where do you go? But, but where does his map control come from? You try and get a blink dagger on this guy, a full staff on this guy? 
one, finding the money for just that is already difficult. You see where he's TPing into. It's the tier two tower as opposed to the creep wave up on the top lane. This is how defensive he feels. But even after he gets Blink Dagger, you still got a Storm Script. That's why I was flagging him, like flagging Storm Script during the draft. I also love this. He's trying to farm up the camp, but there's nothing there. Uh, <laughs> it's, all, it's already been taken out. Um, so he actually got absolutely nothing from what he just did. Uh, but yeah, even if he gets a Blink Dagger, Storm Spirit follows him. Wherever he wants to go, he just follows him the entire way. I want to point out another thing about the whole uh, the whole lead. If you bring up the net worth, you'll see a big reason as to why Empire are actually ahead by as much as they are. Oh wait, we're gonna might might have a fight break out here? No, nah, it looks if, like nothing's gonna happen. That error. Yes, Harris kick an egg. No, they're gonna go. Roommaster in for the double flap with the static remnant over on two. They throw out the Orchid and already they've taken out two. Both Lion and Lich on the sidelines. Resolution's locked here because of no tail. The now Resolution jumps inside the pit. The Sky Red Mage over, but Resolution can fight him inside the pit. The Rock is still coming from Excalibur. That'll find the kill, but they've lost so much for what they're going to gain here. And Trixie is toast. There's no way he can survive this one. Brewmaster secures a triple kill. And I wouldn't be surprised if Fnatic have their, their fingers in the middle of the keyboard just looking at the G button. Because right now, Empire, they are just rolling through Fnatic during teamfights. They're bouncing them around. And even just getting one kill on a Storm Spirit there proved to be like climbing Everest. Bloody hard and rock. Are you looking at the net worth right now? Uh, I, I, I have the net worth up since like 11 yeah. minutes, man. That's one thing I will show. But you're right, I do try and keep the gold experience secret. Three heroes on Fnatic are barely ahead of the position five hero on Empire combined. Vanscore has a net worth of 5,000, Beastmaster is 700, Lion has 1,700, and Lich with 33. So just the advantage here that that Empire has gained is insane, and Enigma is the position 4 hero here, he is way above, he almost has twice the net worth of the, the three bottom heroes combined on Fnatic, so... This is just a power demonstration coming out from Empire, now 20,000 gold ahead, the, the last fight, it's just... What I love about the draft from Empire is how many ways they have of initiating a fight. They can open with Enigma, with a Malefist, they can open with Brewmaster blinking in, they can open with Storm Spirit jumping in, they can open with an Orc hit from Clinks, and they can even open with Skywrath Mage with the slow. They have so many possible situations where the fight will be on their terms, uh -huh. and they keep finding those fights. It's just so well done and really hard to play against. It's got even more powerful too. Like Skywrath's already got an innate slow, but now he's got a Rod of Owie up and running. You got an Enigma who's got a Blink Dagger BKB. It's, <laughs> man, it's, it's through the roof. And now you're gonna, you're gonna watch Silent solo up Trixie now. Enough damage to finish this job, I don't think. Nope, but he triggers the BKP. Oh, always wanna fly was trying to come in to stop him. If he got in range for that for that Malifus stun, they will be looking at a kill on Excalibur right now and possibly even going high ground. But man, this is the perfect way Empire could have played this game. You're up against a team which you know in the late late game, if a Tinker gets a reasonable start, he's going to destroy you. So what they what they look at and go and say is, all right. How do we deal with this? We come in and we say, at 10 to 15 minutes in, they can't repel our initiation, so we just kill them off. And that is where we win the game. You don't that have is to where play Excalibur for the late is game. as well. Yeah, he's dead in the top lane. Always on a fly side, that one up. <laughs> They're coming in deep, but look where Vanskull's coming up. They don't have any vision though, he doesn't have a gem available. That Moonlight Shadow's already triggered. This is this is Empire going high ground. I see no reason why they shouldn't. No, Enigma will have mech again in 20 seconds, and he does have BKB and Blink, so he can... He hasn't even used Black Hole this game. Yeah, not once. Right? Th there hasn't been an opportunity. Every time he's gone oh, in for it, everyone's been dead straight away, because they're either Orchid, or Brewmaster Clapped, or Vortex, or Skywrath Mage Gold He's sitting there going, well, Fnatic's never grouped up as five anyway. They try and keep their distance. You got Lich and Lion, two supports that keep back a long, long way. Trixie throws Arrow from a long way away. And Beastmaster, when he roars, he also roars from a long way away. Tinker's the only one on the front lines because Empire jump him. It's um, it's gonna. Yeah, this I don't know. I'm not sure what to what to bring up anymore. This game is just flat out over. It's uh. uh we can leave the last, last fight for Man, he just melts in the fire and the flames. The Earth Ruling Stun also comes out, keeping Fly out. They've taken top ranks. The Brewmaster split hand's gone. And Arrow's also coming out. But okay, Brewmaster comes back in again. He stuns up No Tell. They slow up Excalibur with a Rod of Owie. And Trixie was set up in towards the air. They still are finding a kill here, but they're looking back over, over towards. Uh, okay. See the blink out in time this time around here from Mag. That's 1,210 gold. It's not very often you see it go over the 1,200 mark. Uh, but that was a 9-0 kill streak for the Brewmaster, which was just taken. 
Yeah, Trixie's gonna get all that gold, so he might be able to finish his Manta soon, but that will, of course, allow him to get away from Clink's ganks, but he doesn't have it yet. If Silent actually won it, he could have killed him there, but it's, it's might be nervous. I think he's worried the fact that, oh, like, a, Excalibur. Excalibur. Oh. Let's go Scepter, though. Yeah. I'm wondering now if, if he considers going to Dagon. All right, well, while we got time before they go in again, chat trivia time. We got time for one. Only three heroes have uh, have over 60% win rates in 6.81B in 40 more appearances. Who are they? Uh, Templar Assassin. Really? You're going to throw TA straight out? Uh, although it did lose a couple of games I cast recently, but it did have a 60% win rate before but, but those. O over 40 appearances, though? Yeah, I think so. I think TA has... Hey! Oh. Hello, Fly! Resolution, he's got the kill already. They move over Trixie. There's your black hole moment. Come on. Nope. Come on, Fly. Come on. It doesn't care if it's just for one person. <laughs> he he wants to win the game without using it. To prove a point about how useful Enigma is even without his ultimate. <laughs> and he's really doing it. He's been playing a great game without using a single black hole. And there is the diffusal blade from Silent. Now Tinker is going to just get completely crushed by him. Love the itemization here coming out from Empire. And just the overall pressure they've put in. What I want to return to is, I don't think Fnatic has actually played a bad game. They're just still getting crushed, and it's just intelligent drafting, and Empire has been playing a better game. Uh, the bottom lane from Fnatic, I guess, went better than you could have expected. Lich was level 7 at 6 minutes, they got a lot out of their dual lane. Uh, Tinker had 10 minute BOTs, Trixie had complete free farm with a fast Midas. It still didn't matter. It's not even close, regardless. So... That kind of shows that either Empire has just played the game of their lives, or Fnatic were perhaps at a little bit of a disadvantage strategically from the get-go. I, I think it might be a little bit of column A, a little bit of column B. Oh, Excal Excalibur. Uh, Ghost Scepter will save him all the time. And Diffuse oh, played Diffuse for could, He couldn't get in range for it. And with, with no tail coming in, he's got one second before Invis. And they're going to throw a Sentry Ward down for this. But they've already used Raw. Hardy's got to get his stun perfect. And he gets the initial stun over on Sam. But the BKB is still available here. And in comes Mag. It's a triple clamp into a split. They're going to turn in towards the Brewmaster. Orchid is off cooldown. So he just throws it out. With the Earth Ruling stun, that's just going to be Beastmaster triggering from the Orchid. Hardy with a Jolting as well. There's your hole. Three in the box. And they just keep it held in. Unfortunately, there's no follow up damage to this. Because Brewmaster is still back in his normal form. A blink to clamp on Hardy with one attack will get the Kill, but now he's in a little bit deeper over his head. He bought up his BKB before he's able to get out of here. Five seconds, four here comes seconds. The team. Where's the blink away? In comes resolution. Actually, Sans is over on Trixie to stop any arrow or leap away. And again, the Vortex not working with Sky Wrath Mage. But I don't think it matters right now. By the way, Brewmaster, Enigma, Tide Hunter, my three choices. For uh, chat, let's for see, yeah, Tide. Oh, Tide, I would have said two. I oh, wow. Got one. Okay, so TA actually got under there. Yeah, I completely forgot the trivia. So I said TA. I would have said Tide as well. And I would have had no idea about my third. But wow. Enigma actually above 60. It's, it's that just, is a pretty legit hero. It's the economic game. Yeah, it's true. Man, Mag is also really lucky that Mag was able to go off on him just then. <laughs> oh, there you go. Ah, oh, 38 games, come on. <laughs> See, that's the only reason we put up that limitation was so that TA wouldn't count, right? <laughs> Lame. Oh, uh, Cinderin. You can't, you can't win all the chat trivia, Cinderin. That's just lame. I, I count that as a draw. <laughs> yes. <laughs> would you, it, it would seem really weird, though. You ever have someone come in and say for a stat, well, in 38, it's like, would you go, why did you pick 38? Are you just trying to slide someone or something through? <laughs> It's you like, know, it would like have been you, funny you if he would have written in 39 or more appearances. <laughs> you, you must be 16 and 9 months to enter the bar. <laughs> yeah. Thanks, Nahaz. Really nice of you. Anyway, yeah, what, what was it? So it was Bane has the highest competitive win rate in 40 games with 64.4%. That's ridiculously high. I can't believe and, he's that high, too. I haven't, yeah. I haven't seen me like, played that much, at least like where you'd flag it in your mind saying, yeah, Bane was a really critical factor in this, in this game. The thing about Enigma that gives him a really high win rate is that it's often a really good last pick. It's been picked with higher priority in a lot of matches recently, but in the games where you can see that you can, exactly like you said, play the economy battle, Enigma is just like one of the best last picks because he will outfarm the enemy team's jungler or their supports or whatever yeah. and be more important. So because of that, I can easily see Enigma having a high win rate. But what's really impressive about it is I think a lot of those games, Enigma was actually picked fairly early and still wins. So, Well, there's nothing you can about it like the whole warding up the jungle kind of thing is going to happen anyway but 
Like, teams have almost got to a point where, like, if you ward up our jungle, we'll just run a semi-aggro tri lane with Enigma down there. Like, that we, we turn to these, like, very just strong dual lanes with a, with a jungler, or one dual lane off lane with a jungler, which is where, like, Bane and Mirana work perfectly. Uh, also, Fly, okay, it hands off keyboard, uh, five seconds off the stun, and they're gonna kill him off here. Roar as well. The committal up against that Enigma was high. The Observer was set up for it up on top of the cliff, but he was actually standing there still for a good five, six seconds before the stun hit. And I think if always one of Fly has buyback, he would have used it right now, and they would have tried to go high ground. Primal Roar is on cooldown, and that's a pretty important ability for Fnatic, but always one of Fly doesn't have the gold for it. He bought the Boots of Travel, so he can't buy back. Arrow again? Oh, that was really close. That had to be on the edge of max range. And hit the Ogre. I think Trixie got the last hit on the Ogre, actually, so... Okay. That was really, really close to, to getting past the Ogre and hitting Silent though, and gotta admire Fnatic's, um... What, what should we call that? Fighting spirit? Yeah, I guess maybe that's a good way of putting it. They're at least being persistent here. They have to be, they have to feel the pressure right now, but they're, they're looking for whatever they can find, and maybe Sentry not. Oh. Sentry I think Fly should resolution. not have been over there. They kind of gave it away. Fans goes the neighborhood, the rockets are coming in at the moment. They're jumping over, there's Mag oh. in the middle of the fight. <laughs> and Big Daddy! He ain't so big anymore. There level 3 Sky Rathalt. <laughs> he's pouring that Beast Bastard. He's got boots and a stick. And the Beastmaster has a... Uh, actually, what is he? He's at 785 net worth over on the Beastmaster. I know it's a support Beastmaster. But 785 up against a Sky Wrath Mage. Sky Wrath Mage is actually 10 times his net worth. <laughs> Just, just to put that in perspective, it's a full 10 times the difference. Well done, Mag. Would you please stop fighting arrows? And I think, uh, to put things in perspective, I think we had a stat at some point during the TI4 qualifiers. The team that have this type of lead are currently about 500 to 0 in competitive matches. So, I don't think any team has ever come back from this. I don't think any deficit, team could come back in. This. Tinker is one of the heroes that could, but I, Empire has to make the has to have the worst late game performance ever to lose this game at this point, but... I think you need more turtle abilities too, and something which in the, like, Tinker still needs map control before he's really effective in the late game. You need something like a Coddle, a Spectre, a Tazzle, something along these lines that lets you stay yeah. alive and continue to fight inside your base if you're going to attempt the, the, oh my amazing kind of comeback kind of thing. Like, that's what you would require. But like, Beastmaster acts as a level four, like, it's just not enough. But you see what Silent's doing. Like, he just runs up here and he comes to Zor's spirit. They instantly silence this Excalibur. They move over to Wallace Tricks. The buyback comes down from Excalibur. But the Skyrim at the Ultimate also flew out just to ensure that Mirana was dead. And look, they've lost Rain Tracks to mid. The top lane is still pushing him with Super Seismic Creeps. And Brewmarsh now is on top of the Tinker. If they kill him off here after buyback, where's your black hole? Come on, always wanna fly. You can blink into this, man. You got so many different targets. Excalibur is behind him looking for the last hit. But GG. GG is the call. It will finally be done in. Yeah! <laughs> but unfortunately, Lin Chelsea goes through the BKB immunity. <laughs> Which is why I was like before when you said, I wonder if Enigma would get a BKB first, which he did, but we never really saw the effect of himself because he got a Blink Dagger almost instantly after. Yeah, uh, and the good black hole he had, they, they were two against five, and they basically stalled for like 10 seconds until the team showed up. If the team was there when he used the black hole, there would have been an instant triple kill for someone, but yeah, they didn't need it. Just amazing.